Hey everyone, today we're talking about why we're stopping using moss and now we're using coconut to grow our plants. If you've been following it along, I'm a big fan of using sphagnum moss to propagate plants and to add into aeroid mixes and to do other things, primarily with propagation. But with the supply chain shocks of the pandemic, sphagnum moss has skyrocketed in price and come to find out it is actually pretty bad for the environment. Most sphagnum moss comes from up in Canada where it's mined and taken from peat bogs. But that's not the main reason why we're stopping using it. We found there's a little bit too much microbial activity in the peat moss. So when we're using this for propagation mixed with perlite, typically about 50-50, we'd find there was a lot of damping off in our cuttings. So we'd find a lot more root rot, a lot more stem rot when using sphagnum moss. This primarily is because this is usually not heat treated. So when a media is harvested from the environment, like in a peat bog, it's pulled out. Usually the moisture is taken out of it. Either it goes into a sterilizer or it's packaged for use. And that's where coconut comes in. This is coconut husk and it comes in a bunch of different varieties of coconut material. It's primarily harvested from coconuts, so when they're creating the edible parts of the coconut, the coconut milk, water, or the meat from the coconut to make coconut products, they then take the husk off the coconut, grind it down, and then they sterilize it. That's the important part here. They bake this coconut in ovens to take out all of the microbial activity and kill off whatever's in it. Then it comes to you in these massive bricks. This brick ships just like this, needs to be hydrated with water, and then becomes like 30 gallons. It's huge. The other type of coconut product we use here is called coconut choir, and this is really what we use for propagation. We use that chunky style for our aeroid mix and once our plants are established, but this is what I've been using for propagation. I've had lots of success with it. Our propagation mix is very simple. It's one part coconut choir and then two parts perlite, one and two. So it's thirds, one third coconut choir. You can also use peat moss for this and then two parts perlite or vermiculite or even pumice, just anything for drainage. So this is the outcome of our mix. I pack it down just a little bit once I've filled it. Here is a philodendron splendid that I just cut and I'll stick it directly into the media, kind of press it down. Add just a splash of water to hydrate the media. Very little, you wanna just keep it damp. And then I put the pots into this humidity dome. You can also use a plastic bag over the top to trap the humidity, milk carton cut in half, a bunch of different ways to trap that humidity, or if you have a greenhouse cabinet, that also works. And in about two weeks, we're getting roots out of the bottom on some of these plants. So we've had a lot more success with using coconut versus sphagnum moss, and it's cheaper, and it seems to be not as bad for the environment. That is debated, but those are the facts that I came up with in researching this video. Remember that your moss or your coconut is just there to hold your water. And moss tends to hold on to nutrients a little bit better than coconut does, so keep that in mind. And the other reason why I like coconut better is it's already at a pH of about 6 to 7, which is what most plants like, whereas moss comes in at about 3 to 4 on the pH scale, which is very acidic. Even if I had a bunch of this moss, I'd probably still use it. I'm just getting a bit too much microbial action than I prefer on my smaller plants. It's super important to introduce microbes and bacteria later on in the stage of the plant's life. When they're early on and very young, a fungal outbreak or anything microbial that is not great for the plant can then go and attack those roots. And peat bogs tend to be in a decomposing area where that moss has been grown already and then it's kind of in a swampy, marshy land that has a bunch of decomposing bacteria to break down this moss. So that's why we probably have a bit more microbial action here than the outside of a fruit or really whatever a coconut is. I think it's a fruit or a seed. Check out coconut for a different alternative to moss. If you still have moss, go ahead and use it. It's up to you. I just want to put the information out there. Thanks so much for watching this week's video. If you guys did enjoy the video and or learned something new, please click the like button down below. It helps us out and it's free to you. And if you want to come back every Saturday for another houseplant video, click subscribe and we'll see you next Saturday. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.